Next thing to do on the trailer is put this uh, jack here. <clears throat> this is where the, well, the original jack used to be there. That got uh, hit a little bit too many times by my dad leaving his tailgate down. Um, got one of these and uh, flip up, which is it's nice because you don't have to worry about st something hanging down and getting caught with one of these. Um, it's done well. Um, Dad left it down one time and uh, drug it from the backyard and bent this part of the A-frame. Um, it's not done any strength damage because, I mean, that's a pretty darn thick A-frame. <clears throat> I'm probably going to put a plate behind there anyway once I take the jack off. Um, but with the way that this jack is, you can't put a tongue box on it. And I like to put a tongue box on it to keep the straps and stuff in. So with this one... I wish this was slightly taller. This might be an, uh, an issue with getting a, a tongue box on there for uh, the short one. Um, might have to fiddle around with that. But because uh, it's just at about 12 inches or so right here to the bottom. And the tongue box is a little over 12 inches. <clears throat> so um, I don't know. Might have to uh, move the tongue box forward a little bit. It's a little short tongue box, so it'll, it'll fit right here. You just got to worry about turning sharp. Anyway, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to weld a piece of quarter-inch angle right there. I don't know how much of that you're seeing. That's probably dark as heck. At least looking from the camera, that's really dark. Um, anyway, I don't, know, I don't know how much you're seeing, but I got a piece of 2 by 2 quarter-inch angle right here. I'm going to weld across the front. And I'm going to weld the jack to there. And then weld this to here to give it support on the side. And I'm going to put a piece of, uh, I think it's 3 8 angle or maybe uh, eighth inch, um, smaller angle. They go from here to here, here to here. That should give it enough strength. Um, this is a uh, Kurt 8,000 pound uh, uh, 28575 is what it is. Thinking back on it now, I probably should have got the got the top winder uh, one because the one on the top uh, will would definitely make you be able to get a, a bed box or a tongue box in here a lot easier um, because it, you know you just do it from the top and then even even from the top it still goes down um, but uh, yeah let me get all this set up get all the get it upright and then figure out where I have to uh, take the uh, powder coating off Weld it all down, cut this short, and uh, I'll be back. Alright, hopefully you can see, I don't know with all the shadows and the screen's dark, but <clears throat> I got the quarter, the 2 by 2 quarter inch angle uh, cut to length. <clears throat> got it marked out where I need to take the paint off. Got it marked out on the jack where I need to take the paint off. Marked out up here where I need to take the paint off. And, uh, yeah, um, and I straightened the jack out. I had to jack that side up of that side of the trailer up to get the trailer flat, and then uh, it's marked out where it needs to be marked out. So I'll start uh, taking probably just take a big uh, take a wire wheel on my uh, grinder um, and uh, take all the metal off that, take the powder coat off that where I need to. I'll also take it off the side because it needs to be taken off the side. Um, for those small pieces I'm putting in here, I'll probably take off all the metal on that, and uh, then I'll just come back with some uh, spray paint, uh, not spray paint, some uh, sp uh, canned bed liner, and spray everything that needs to be sprayed. That's probably what I'm going to spray, spray the trailer with anyway, whenever I get a, a chance to strip it all down and paint it. <clears throat> if it happens anytime soon, because this, you know, this has been almost bare steel, steel in all these places for years. And you can tell it's it's got some, you know, some somewhat surface rust in some areas, but some of that I think is just primer from the from the steel. But yeah, it's a surface rust. It's not um, anything thick. It's just you know flashed over. So um, it'll get painted eventually. But yep, yeah, let me uh, get to cutting all this down and uh, taking the paint off. All right. Anyway, I'd, again, I don't know how the exposure is doing. Hopefully, it's fine. Uh, sun's blaring out today which is which is nice but it creates a lot of shadows um started welding the plate down once you finally get the the big extension cord and actually plug into the right outlet 
this welder does really good um gosh we've had this thing probably about 10 years now um i really honestly started using it about eight years ago or so and uh everybody says crap well a lot of people say crap about these welders online i don't even think you can get this welder anymore um but for what it is i've welded a bunch of stuff with it and i've never had an issue with it i've welded up the quarter inch plate even though you're not supposed to weld quarter inch plate i've beveled it and done everything else and it welds fine rock sliders i built on my jeep all with this welder my rear bumper on my jeep i built all with this with with this welder then multiple other stuff to uh with it uh you know anywhere from exhaust to more quarter inch stuff uh or even less and it just keeps on going um uh but yeah um <clears throat> once you get into the right outlet does a really good weld goes really deep that's when it was starting to cut out a little bit i don't know how you can see that that's when it was starting to cut out a little bit so i knew it was overheating a little bit getting close to the duty cycle so i stopped it but that weld's good but on the back side's good weld up here's good weld over here is good oh Sun. weld right there is good the only thing I have left to weld back side and side of that back side of that uh, back side of that and uh, if I can get the bottom of this I'll get the bottom of that if not I'll leave it because this isn't necessarily as much of a structural part most most of the structures are going to be down here um though i know this can handle it this is mainly a support for an upright like i said i'm going to take another piece of steel and go here and here just to hold this from bending out kicking out but uh yeah i'm going to continue welding this up and uh then i'll spray some paint on it real quick and show you the finished product all right and it's pretty much done um waiting on the welder to cool down again starting to spit and sputter a little bit but uh <clears throat> got the crossbar welded all the way got this welded on the on the both sides and the top i don't think i'm going to weld the bottom i got these welded on both sides i don't think i'm going to weld over here on the bottom um and then i have it welded around all corners of the of the uh down here except on the bottom we welded on the, both the sides and the top and then i got these pieces right here which you may or may not be able to see then i'm going to weld right there if i can get the back side weld the back side but i doubt it i'm probably just going to weld here uh weld there weld weld there weld there weld there and then there and there uh this right here is mainly a support for this beam right here to keep this beam from kicking out uh it is welded to this though but like i said i don't think i'm going to weld the back side because it's welded on both sides and the front on the bottom right here uh plus it's going to be nigh impossible to get a welding head in there I, I could do it i might put a little stitch in there but i didn't do anything on that side to clean it up because i didn't plan on welding the back side probably not going to weld the bottom if i ever replace these boards this trailer needs to be flipped over and all the crossbars need to be replaced if, if that happens um then i will think about welding the bottom of this but as of right now i'm pretty sure it's going to be fine honestly it's probably overkill because this trailer's uh well technically trailer's got two 3500 pound axles so you could put 7,000 pounds on it but uh you know this jack's going to be plenty uh, and where I'm welding, it should be plenty. There shouldn't be any problems. I'm probably welding it overkill, but I'd rather weld overkill than weld underkill. So uh, I'm going to wait for the welder to cool down and uh, finish welding these uh, cross beam uh, supports in. And then I'll get some paint and put it on there real quick. And uh, then I'll show the friends the product. Alrighty. It's all painted now. And again, I don't know how... It's gonna show up. I guess that's better. Probably still in the shadow. I can't tell. Sprayed some quick bed liner on it. Uh, 
practically just one coat or dry dries pretty quick so maybe one and a half um but uh i'm out or i got another can somewhere but i don't feel like looking for it <clears throat> so uh yeah right now the trailer and the truck practically is uh supported by the jack so uh yeah i'm just gonna but yeah um and that's it that's it for the jack install um yeah it's the kurt uh five eight or excuse me it's the kurt uh eight thousand pound uh jack it's uh two eight five seven five um so yeah um but yeah like i said right now the tra the trailer and the rear end of the truck is actually somewhat supported on the jack not all the rear end of the truck because it's not off the ground but but the, the truck is lifted up a little bit um now i next um i was going to go in the back and weld some flat plate like i want to so i can take the ramps and hook them on um so they don't slide off when you're trying to get the jeep up and down but uh i think this is where i'm done for the day got a headache so i might as well stop I don't want it to get too bad, but, uh, that's it, and, uh, next, um, I don't know, it depends on what I feel like doing next, I might weld that piece on the back next, and then get into the wiring, or I might do the wiring, and then do that, put that on last, but, uh, that's it for the jack install, and, uh, I'll talk to y'all later.